You need this, and this, and this. Listen to me, I always know where to go. When you've got professionals on your side, your problems don't stand a chance. What are you waiting for? Contact them today and them take care of your problems. Don't you hate it when that happens to you? When it does, you need this, and this, and this. When it happens to me, I always know where to go. When you've got professionals on your side, you're probably Thank you. 
morning. Welcome to Undaunted, bringing it to the news on Told Stories. I am Oni Okmala. Let's begin. The fun of Unshell, who has betrayed his people severely and unwaverly, this time is okay. still given a title to Bulu Betty okay. the okay. same individual who wants his people, the peoples of southern Cameroon and Brazonia, to be eased off from the earth. That notwithstanding, there is hope for Amazonia. For a long time, if not the first time, we have seen all arms of the interim government being proactively collaborating. That's amazing. Since Cameroon launched a war of genocide against the peoples of southern Cameroon, Ambazonia, characterized by atrocities, war crimes, and widespread persecution by insecurity services, Ambazonians in the United States, led by the interim government, have been working tirelessly with the U.S. elected officials, senators, House of Representatives, and other stakeholders to push for a solution. And today, we have gotten a solution from the Bidens administration. President Sarkozy's address to the nation of Amazonia on the National Day of Mourning last Saturday, April 16th, was touching and electrifying. Chairman of the Social Democratic Front, Nijon through 1,000 Cameroonians to be extradited into French Cameroon and be prosecuted by the colonial government. Yesterday, stakeholders of the liberation and unity by the president raised over 30,000 US dollars for the National Emergency Fund for Bui County. I know you can't wait for the details of the story, but before we even get there, let's get to the prime headline. Prime Headlines The Paramount Fund of, of the Bui County has shockingly decorated a member of Parliament from the littoral region with a traditional title of informed Position statement for the implement of the Federal Republic of Amazonia, released on and supported by every arm of government, sends a strong message to La Republic of Maroon and the international community. The temporary protected status (TPS), which typically benefits undocumented immigrants and those with visas that are set to expire, also favors more those who have been living in the United States before April 14 this year. President Sarko's address to the nation of Amazonia on that national day of mourning last Saturday, April 16th, was touching and electrifying. Chairman of the Social Democratic Front, Nijon Fru, wants certain Cameroonians to be extradited into French Cameroon and to be prosecuted by the colonial government. The unity warriors of Colonel Bankui, Bayaba, and the Kuars kill another general, General Wolf. In our editorial of today, we continue with some historical facts of today's Ambazonia. Today's news is on the packed you. With this, I apologize for coming to schedule with the news today. But trust me, you will definitely enjoy every bit of Undaunted tonight. Now the news starts. It is heartbreaking that we have to begin the news of today with this energetic note. Kim's attempt of assimilation to create even the sacred places of Ambazonia. Some traditional rulers have outrightly turned into dirty politics, despising the wishes of their own people. 
Some months ago, the Bulu Betty Dishonorable Cabral Libi said drastic measures needed to be taken to tackle the armed conflict in Amazonia. He urged President Balbier to declare a state of emergency in Amazonia, adding that it was the best way to handle the war. As we speak, the reality in Cabral Libi has been given to Fomi, title meaning Army General. How the fun of Monsieur arrived at that decision is a discussion for another day. But Unfo Hansen of Cameroon's news agency, CNA, poses good question. The question is, now that Cabral Libi has been given the Unfomi title, meaning Army General, will he declare his much desired state of emergency? Mr. Smart, what do you think? Only it is important that you have brought in the aspect of Cabral's way to handle the conflict between the Cameroons into this discussion. At a time when the carnage in Amazonia was on full scale, a time when more than 30,000 innocent lives had been wasted simply for asserting their rights to self-determination, Cabral Libby urged the colonial government to impose a state of emergency in southern Cameroon's Amazonia. We all know that the French Cameroon military and the Atanga G boys killed the civilian population and shipped the blame. After the failed attempt to convince the World Human Rights Organization that the brutal killings of students in a private secondary school in Kumba on the 24th of October 2020 was done by the Amazonian Restoration Forces, the Amazonian Cameroon-born politician Cabral Libi, who lost during their special election, took the situation as an opportunity to win the confidence of France. In a press conference in Yaoundé, October 26, 2020, Cabral, the national president of PCRN political party, challenged President Paul Bia to take responsibility and impose a state of emergency in Amazonia. According to Cabral Libi, the member of the Kangaroo Parliament of French Cameroon, the military cannot effectively fight boys asking for the restoration of the state of Amazonia without a state of emergency imposed. Cabral Levy advised the president Bia not to listen to some of his close aides that have been feeding him with untrue information on the war situation in Bamenda. He says, listen to Mancho Bibixi and Ngalam Felix. They have been sentenced already concerning the aglophone crisis, but from the writings, they are ready to collaborate in the process of bringing about peace in the northwest and southwest region of Cameroon. The parliamentarian failed to state clearly if the President of the Republic should grant clemency to the two cited above to ensure their effective participation in peace building in the embattled regions. In another proposal on how to stop wanton killings in southern Cameroon, Cabral Libby asked for an extraordinary National Assembly to focus on the issue. The demand was criticized by some political analysts who thought the laxity of lawmakers in French Cameroon in debating issues of the crisis at the Kangaroo National Assembly is evident for everyone. They thought that Cabral Libby was asking for an extraordinary session of the National Assembly simply because of the financial fallout for lawmakers. The leader of PCRN political party used the press conference to condemn the killing of students at Mother Francisca International Memorial Bilingual College, but yet wasn't honest to tell the world that the government was beginning it. Before I move any further with this coverage, I would like to answer the questions. What is a state of emergency? What was Cabra Libby's request all about? A state of emergency is a situation of national danger or disaster in which a government suspends normal constitutional procedures in order to regain control. With this definition, you would be tempted to ask, is the war in Amazonia a national danger for Amazon or rural? How on earth will Cabra Libby present the colonial government a victim of the genocide or onslaught in Amazonia? With that in mind, your worries are on his mind. How on earth a paramount traditional ruler of Amazonia will grant such an individual a traditional title? Position statements on illegal or unauthorized agreement and treaties with Cameroon Republic or international brokers on behalf of the former French Southern Cameroons, that is Amazonia. The interesting part of these statements is that for a long time, if not for the first time, we have seen all arms of the interim government being proactively collaborative. 
The position statement, which is released, which was released late Sunday evening, was supported by every arm of government. With this, one could rightfully say the divorce with coup plotters and the extinction of the defunct Restoration Council of Cometa is a blessing. We have Dr. Winnie Lobati, House Speaker of the Interim House of Representatives, and Barrister Timothy Mbesha, Chairman of the Judiciary Commission, here in our undaunted newsroom to take some questions. But first, let's get details of the statement from Star Smart. I'll just go on to read the statement. The interim government of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia, former British Southern Cameroons, State House, Boya, 6218 Georgia Avenue, NW Suit 1459, Washington, D.C. 20011-5125. Position statement on illegal or unauthorized agreements and treaties with Cameroon Republic or international brokers on behalf of the former British Southern Cameroons, also known as Ambazonia. Dated April 15, 2022. Unauthorized peace deals and illegal exploitation of the former British Southern Cameroons, also known as Ambazonia, natural resources through agreements or treaties by individuals or groups on behalf of the people of Ambazonia former British Southern Cameroons are non-binding. Mindful of non-implementation of the United Nations General Assembly Resolution 1514 XV of 14 December 1960 pertaining to the declaration on the granting of independence to colonial countries and people. Mindful of United Nations General Assembly Resolution 1541 XV of 15 December 1960 titled Principle which should guide members in determining whether or not an obligation exists to transmit the information called for under Article 73E of the Charter. Was a resolution of the United Nations General Assembly during its 15th session which annexes of 12 principles, which affirm that to ensure decolonization, complete compliance with the principle of self-determination is required. Mindful of the United Nations General Assembly Resolution 1608 XV5, inviting the administering authority UK, the government of the former British Southern Cameroons and the Republic of Cameroon to initiate urgent discussions with a view to finalizing before 1st October 1961. The arrangements by which the agreed and declared policies of the parties concerned will be implemented. Mindful of African Union Constitutive Act Art 4B, which reiterates respect of borders existing on achievement of independence. Mindful of the Banjul ruling ACHPR, which affirmed that former British Southern Cameroons are a people with the right to self-determination. Article 20 of ruling. And called on the government of Cameroon to make a solemn apology of Southern Cameroons for the crimes and mistakes committed against them by the regime during the 48 years of continuous occupation and annexation of our territory, the Southern Cameroons. Whereas it is imperative in the supreme interest of their very survival and existence for the people of former British Southern Cameroons to solemnly dissolve all bonds with Cameroon Republic, and whereas a decent respect for the international community requires that the reasons that dictate this action be stated so that the nations of the world fully understand its rectitude. Whereas the life of our people has been a life of tragedy, injustice, continuing oppression, suffering, sorrow, tribulation, and death. Whereas from 1st October 1960 to 30th September 1961, the former British Southern Cameroons, also known as Ambazonia, was a fully autonomous self-governing country poised for independence. Whereas French Cameroon achieved independence on 1st January 1960 under the name of La Republique du Cameroon, Cameroon Republic. Whereas in June 1972, Cameroon Republic acting unilaterally and illegitimately and in violation of UNGA Res 1541, abolished their purported federal constitution of 1961 and changing the purported Federal Republic of Cameroon to the United Republic of Cameroon. Whereas the said United Republic of Cameroon also decreed itself out of existence in February 1984 by its own restoration law 8401 which revived the masqueraded La Republic du Cameroon, hence 
rendering the former British Southern Cameroon citizen stateless. Whereas the unwarranted assumption of sovereignty over the former British Southern Cameroon by Cameroon Republic amounts to recolonization of the former British Southern Cameroon, also known as Amazonia. And the usurpation of an unlimited, uncontrolled, and pernicious power over the persons, liberties, territories, and properties of the people of the former British Southern Cameroon. There is not even a signed instrument of cession of territory that Cameroon Republic can exhibit as the basis of its annexation and colonial occupation of the former British Southern Cameroon, also known as Amazonia, as contemplated in 1608 XP5. Whereas the untoward effects of the recolonization of the former British Southern Cameroon, also known as Amazonia, by Cameroon cruel, sorry, by Cameroon Republic includes the subjection of our people to cruel, inhumane, and degrading treatment, the intolerable humiliation and mortification of the dignity of our people as colonial subject, the equally intolerable debasement of a political status of the former British Southern Cameroon, also known as Amazonia, from the autonomous, fully self-governing state to an annexed and balkanized colonial dependency. Whereas every people have the right to exist, self-determination, leaving freedom, dignity, security, and have the right to aspire to a secured and hopeful future for themselves and their progenies. Whereas Cameroon Republic has pretended not to understand the clear and legal political significance of the framed two separate large maps, one of the former British Southern Cameroon, also known as Amazonia, and the other of Cameroon Republic, presented to the president of that country, Mr. Paul Bia, during Cameroon Republic 50th anniversary in 2010 by the United Nations through the General Assembly president at the time, Dr. Ali Trekki. Whereas in order to maintain its colonial and exploitative stranglehold over our country, Cameroon Republic has intensified its obsessional measures aimed at promoting the internal conversion, fission, and community factionalism in the former British Southern Cameroon, also known as Amazonia, as well as exciting, as well as exciting domestic rivalry and suspicion as part of its policy to destroy us. And whereas Cameroon Republic has also constrained some of our citizens taken captive by its bribe and temporary law of office and threat of death to sell their country. The former British Southern Cameroon, also known as Amazonia, to turn against it to deny the right of its people to existence and to become traitors and executioners of their friends, families and fellow citizens. Whereas Cameroon Republic is historically and cognitively addicted to violence, is duplicitous and completely untrustworthy, and in the conduct of public affairs is politically deceitful and is notorious for duplicity, obfuscation, mendacity, dishonesty, patronage, fraud, and corruption. Whereas the people of the former British Southern Cameroons, also known as Amazonia, refuse to interweave their destiny with that of Cameroon Republic and refuse to entangle their peace, safety and prosperity in the evil and toxic interests of that country. Whereas the people of the former British Southern Cameroons, also known as Amazonia, have under international law and the law of nature an unquestionable right to assert their independence and statehood and claim the intangibility of the international boundaries of the former British Southern Cameroon in conformity with the continuing and inalienable right of self-determination and the international law principle of uti posidatis juris. Whereas on 22nd of April 2017, the people of the former British Southern Cameroon, also known as Amazonia, rose up in unionism with peace plans denouncing continued colonization and illegal occupation of their land and again in similar fashion came out in their masses on 1st October 2017 and reclaimed the restoration of their independence. Therefore, be it known that all arms of the interim government of the Federal Republic of Amazonia, former British Southern Cameroon, was informed of a surprise and embarrassing news of the visit of some of their fawns and chiefs, traditional rulers, to France, jointly state as follows. 1. Traditional rulers, fawns and chiefs of Amazonia, the former British Southern Cameroons, are not politicians. Their role in the society is essentially cultural preservations of the different traditions of the communities over which they have and exercise traditional authorities. Two, 
To the best of our knowledge, no French political or administrative authorities have invited Amazonian political and or cultural leaders to Paris in the last 60 years. Similarly, we cannot remember any of France's diplomatic representatives in Yaoundé ever paying a cortical on any Amazonian traditional leaders since 1961. Three, for the past five years and continuing, La Republique du Cameroon, with the active participation of France, is engaged in a war of genocide on the people of the former British Southern Cameroons, also known as Amazonia. This genocide includes, but not limited to, killings of the former British Cameroons, also known as Amazonian citizens, for who they are and not for any crimes they have committed. Indiscriminate burning down of hundreds of villages and over which some of these fawns and chiefs invited to Paris rule. And other Amazonian habitations, the wanton and indiscriminate arrest and detention and execution of the former British Southern Cameroons, also known as Amazonian citizens, without any fair trials and the execution of Amazonians in detention. For more on the genocide, visit www.amazoniagenocidelibrary.com. Four. We wish to emphasize that such an invitation and visit at this time of war is suspicious to all right-thinking and freedom-loving citizens of the former British Southern Cameroons, also known as Amazonia. And five, we wish further to inform Paris, your one-day political establishments in particular, and the international community at large, that under the carpet deals over the ongoing Amazonia restoration struggle are ill-advisable and unacceptable. Six, the people of the former British Southern Cameroons, also known as Amazonia, remain the sovereign authority over their territory and its natural resources. UNGA REST 1608 XV5, 1514 XV, and 1541 XV, referred to above. Because of the foregoing, we wish to inform Yawunde, France, and the international community at large, and their political leaders, that any deals or agreements purportedly entered into by any chiefs of funds will not be binding even on the individual's village of origin. Talk less off on Amazonia, former British Southern Cameroon, as a nation. We also wish to emphasize that any former British Southern Cameroon citizen, also known as Amazonia, or group movement, purportedly entering into any dubious deals in general, and especially over natural resources of Amazonia, will not be binding on us. Such individuals or groups will eventually pay the price of their treachery. Done on this 15th day of April in the year 2022, AD, signed Dr. Samuel Ikomi Sako, President of the Federal Republic of Amazonia, Dr. Winnie Lobati, Speaker of the Interim House of Representatives of the Federal Republic of Amazonia. In a jiffy, we will be bringing to you the Speaker of the Interim House of Representatives, Dr. Winnie Lobati, and of course, Barrister Timothy Mbesha. But before we bring them, let's have Tarpa the King. Um, there, 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 there are questions that I think that he needs to answer. So we need to go to our news and interview studio to um, get him on board to answer some questions concerning Cabral Libby. Are you there? Yes, I can hear you Good loud and clear. Can you hear me? Confirm you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. I think my sound is, is okay. All right. Um, in our first question and our first paper today, we're looking at how on earth a paramount ruler in Amazonia will grant such an individual a traditional title. Please, what is your answer to this? Um, I, I think um, it's an apology. Uh, just a few days ago, we had this discussion, exclusive discussion, and uh, 
I, I made a suggestion to the government and to the people of Zonia in their different communities and, and villages to rethink the concept of, of the traditional kingdoms, chiefdoms, and fundams. Because I would say it is fast losing its value. We have traditional rulers now becoming more cruel. They are becoming more corrupt than even politicians. They have defied our traditions and customs. And my question I want to ask is, should these traditions even, even be constant? I did some aspects of anthropology and traditions or customs and cultures of people evolve with time. It has to be suitable. Modern societies, um, the way they lived 100 or 200 or 300 years ago is not the way they are living today. If a society has to make progress, we do not only need to change to build new roads and build skyscrapers, even the institutions. Now, how did traditional rulers come about? If you have read any aspect of history, it came about because a people naturally at one time would want leadership. So they create structures so they, you have, and then you have chiefs. Today, we have not just the Fon and Guapo, you have the Fon on Sop of Bui County who unapologetically has decided to work at with his people and his tradition. What does he do? He's outrightly a CPDM. He does not respect the wishes of his people. He, he doesn't even respect the traditions that he's supposed to be a custodian. And scandalously, disgracefully, you have a fall of a community like the Bui community. Then some people hold it at a very high esteem. A fawn choosing to give what you call the red feather to honor a Bulu Betty born. This is a man, like you rightfully reported a few minutes ago, who outrightly to Cameroon to be critical on us. So it, it's really unfortunate. It, it's embarrassing, believe me. Now, before you continue, um, Cabral Libby made a request in 2020 for the colonial administration to declare a state of emergency in Ambazonia. Uh, what do you think about that request? Or what do you think that request was all about? Um, first of all, what's a state of emergency? A state of emergency, like you rightfully defined, means that a country is facing attack or so what Cabral Libby was trying to say is that the Cameroon is putting the Cameroon government as a victim. But we know who the victims are. The, the rightful victims, as we speak, are the peoples of the former British Southern Cameroons. And why? Because there's no treaty of union between them and French Cameroon. These are a people that came into an experimental relationship. They have been disrespected. They have been recolonized. There, there, there has been a calculated attempt to assimilate them. And now we are seeing that the agenda was not just to assimilate, but to annihilate. So it is not even feasible for any politician, any right thinking, honest politician, to even think that Cameroon is a victim of, of the fact that the peoples of the former British South in Cameroon today, Amazonia, have chosen to, to, to assert their rights to self determination. They are defending their homeland. Now, how did we get here? The people wanted peace plans. We were merely protesting, having peace plans. And then Cameroon started killing. Kabara Libi is saying that because the Amazonian Restoration Forces are resisting the colonial forces, Cameroon should give a blackout, put the laws of the country aside, and just wipe the people. That is the suggestion Kabara Libi gave. And this is what is vexing in the soul. It's so vexing to see that after a man will say a people should be wiped out because that is what he meant by a state of emergency. A state of emergency means you keep the constitution aside and use a critical measure to put order. And what is that critical measure? That is even what Cameroon started when there was a blackout in 2016. That was an abuse of the rights of the peoples of the former British Southern Cameroons, cutting them off the wall. And during that time, the damage they the, there was calculation so that is the proposal of Kabali that is the same 
Cabral Libri, the skinny man that you have the phone on so unfortunately is giving him a title. A title in Amazonia is given to people of dignity, people that have brought development in society, people who have changed generations. But this is not what has happened. So you want me to, your, your worries are as many as mine. How did we get to the point where we are bequeathing unto him a title, an honorable title? It's unfortunate. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Tapati King. We'll definitely come back to you for other questions, but we need to bring um, Dr. Winnie Lobati into the interview um, news uh, room right about now. <laughs> And that was um, our director, Tapa the King. And right about now, we we'll have Dr. Winnie Lobati, House Speaker of the Interim House of Representatives, and Barista Timothy Mbesha, Chairman of the Judiciary Commission, here in our undaunted newsroom to take some questions. Um, so we'll go to the newsroom to have them. Greetings, Dr. Winnie Lobati. Greetings. Please confirm that you can hear me, Ma. I, yes, I can hear you. Greetings, Barrister Timothy. Please confirm that you can hear me loud and clear. I hear you perfectly well. Can you hear me? I hear you very, very well. Yes, yes all we right, can. All right, you're welcome to our news and interview studio today. Now, Dr. Winnie, please, um, if you listen to part of the statement that Star Smart read, I'm going to paraphrase part of the statement that caught my attention. Um, some part of that um, statement reads that no France diplomatic representatives or authorities has ever invited any Ambazonian leaders to Paris, at least in the last 60 years. So, thinking out loud, what do you think that these traditional rulers, the fawns and the chiefs of Ambazonia went to do in Paris? Dr. Winnie, please. Uh, thank you, Onyeka. Um, if you notice, in one of our reasons why we gave for um, separate just and almost complete from La Republique, it was that they have they are used to crookery, treachery, bribery, corruption for whatever means that they can get without the rule of law to accomplish their evil ends and means. So France being their, I'll call it in quotes, godfather, uh, maybe the most, the one masterminding all this, uh, haven't invited our traditional uh, be the chiefs so of fun is another one of those um things that we just shake our heads and say okay what are you up to at this time but we will not sit back and wait to see what you are trying to do to use them as in the days of the um, european masters who came and signed some big treaties with our chiefs and pawns and stepped into our territory we are not going to let that at this moment. 
we are in the 21st century and so we have to make it clear to them that the people of Amazonia or former British Camerons, we own our territory and we will not let an individual group or a movement go sign backdoor deals with Pari or in another period. All right, thank you. We definitely own our territory. All right, um, Dr. C. Morty Mbisha, you're welcome again, sir. As a legal mind, uh, what do you advise that can be done at a time as this? Well, do you think that there can be some kind of punishment or uh, do you think that they can be ignored? What do you think? Uh, they cannot be ignored. That's why we are reacting. That's why we have reacted in the way we have. To show that they cannot ignore what is going on. The problem is legally, the French Cameroon the Republic thinks that our chiefs what they had in Awunde, Awunde is Cameroon. So was Awunde, Awunde, went to the former old Minister of National Education. You probably see the statue of Chief Atangana of Yawunde. He has a statue there. But what is this guy? This guy is in military uniform. He was crowned by the French people and made king of Yawunde, called Chief Atangana. Again, as we've said, if you look back, First, when the Banjo ruling came out, it said Ambazonians, or at the time English speaking Cameroonians, are a people with a culture to protect. They are people with a right to some things that are laid down under international law. Remember, the Banjo ruling is a ruling of the African Union, it's a political ruling as well as a legal ruling because. Before it is announced, the heads of the fire it. That makes it political. The judges are lawyers. And then, why did he even come out? Let me go back to it for us to understand. We did not raise that issue. It is Yawande that raised the issue in defense. They said what they call Anglophones, they are just like Bamili case. They are like the Bertua people. They are like the people in Douala. And the question, no, no, hold on a minute. They are not like that. They are people who protect their rights with the boundaries to their own land. So they're entitled to things that uh, the Bamirikis not, are not entitled to. They're entitled to things that the Fulanese are not entitled to in the so-called Cameroon. So we're not ignoring it. We cannot ignore it. That's why we send out this message to the international community at large and to Yaoundé in particular. Mm. Uh, all right, um, we'll definitely come back to you, um, Dr. Timothy. Um, please, um, Dr. Winnie. Um, what, what is the importance of uh, these joint statements? What is the importance of these joint statements? Hey, thank you. Um, I think it's very essential for the international community to recognize that our interim government, the interim government of the Federal Republic of Amazonia is not fractionated as may have been given that um, um, view by some a few months back, but that we are strong government, that we have arms of government, we have a structure, and we work within those arms and to balance and show that our plight, our uh, our struggle, gets the international attention it deserves as one front and as a government, not as um arms of government moving uh, one going a direction the other one going the east direction the other one going the north direction no we together move in one direction with one purpose and one goal All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Winnie. Thank you so much, Dr. Timothy. We'll definitely come back to you in a jiffy. Let's go back to the newsroom and continue with the news. Please do not go away. We'll definitely come back uh, to ask more questions. Thank you. 
Following intense and relentless lobby, lobbying by the Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs and the diplomatic services of the interim government of Ambazonia, led by Dr. Samuel Ikomesako, the Homeland Security and Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas granted immigrants from Cameroon temporary protection in the United States on Friday, April the 15th, allowing them to remain in the country for 18 months and apply for work permit. This is a very good news for the thousands of Southern Cameroonians and Brazilian refugees who have fled the ongoing conflict recently and found temporary safety in the United States of America. Before we get some more questions from Dr. Winnie Lobati and Barry Timothy Mbesha, let's get their smart coverage of this particular issue. Since Cameroon launched a war of genocide against the people of the Southern Cameroon Amazonia, characterized by atrocities, war crimes, and widespread persecutions by security services, Amazonians in the United States, led by the interim government, have been working tirelessly with U.S. elected officials, senators, House of Representatives, and other stakeholders to push for this decision. By offering Amazonians and by extension Cameroonians temporary protected status, TPS, the United States implicitly recognizes the persecution and atrocities that our brave people are going through in their legitimate quest for self-determination. This is contrary to the spurious claims by the Cameroon government that peace has returned to our areas under occupation and annexation. Now we have been on social media and different fora where Amazonians interrelated, observing the different perspective. This is what we got. A certain Amazonian says, the IG scores big with TPS. The subterranean diplomacy of the interim government headed by Dr. Sacco has finally yielded a, a remarkable victory. The Biden administration has accorded TPS to Cameroonians in the U.S. in recognition of the war currently in progress in Cameroon. This is a huge political triumph for the interim government, which nobody saw coming. I hope Dr. Ayabacho and Ia Marienta can negotiate such a political facsimile in Norway and Britain, where they live respectively. But there is more. The significance of the TPS to wars carries a broader victory as well. First, it implies that the U.S. now officially understands the existence of such a civil conflict in that part of the world and the only rationale to end TPS must be an end to the war. Hence, the U.S. must take the necessary steps to end the conflict and bring TPS to a halt. While the Biden administration, especially in Democrats in general, maintain a pro-migrant policy, it is the anti-immigrant stance of the Republican Party that will expedite political talks to end TPS, hence an end to the war. TPS has nothing to do with Cameroon's war against Boko Haram. The war with Boko Haram can be traced as far back as the 90s and Cameroon is not unique to the conflict. Boko Haram is an international struggle by Muslims designed to store Western education and maintain an Islamic hegemony in sub-Saharan Africa. It is not focused on Cameroon alone that begs for special treatment from Washington. On the contrary, TPS is designed to be more sympathetic to Amazonians being violently assaulted by the Yaoundé regime. We should understand that Secretary Blinken made it clear in Nigeria that all conflicts in the continent must be resolved from the root causes. I believe that was a connotation for the crisis in Amazonia. It was strategic for him to skip Yabunde during that political tour. Many Amazonians are already complaining that Cameroonians will take advantage of the situation and change their status. My response is simple. The more people that file, the more serious the crisis is projected and the faster the need and necessity for a political solution. Amazonia is our chosen name. However, we are not officially known as such mundanely. These are the words of this Amazonia. On another perspective from none other than the Speaker of the House, Dr. Winnie Lobati, she says, with TPS in place, it implies both the legislative branch and the executive branch of the U.S. government have openly admitted to the problem. They may not openly side with us, but they have done so in a coded language.
We are now to seize the opportunity to diplomatically push for them to continually pressure La Republic de Cameroon to come to the negotiation table. It is a leverage we have now. If we do not have lobbyists for us, it is time to pay and get a good firm that can work on both sides of the aisle, Democrats and Republican. Only I think this is quite impressive. All right, remember, we still have Dr. Winnie and Barista Timothy in the house. Let's go to the interview studio to meet them. all right thank you so much dr winnie lobati thank you for being patient now you just heard your words re-echoed and in it you made a vital suggestion in it you said and i quote um, it is a leverage we have now if we do not have lobbies for us. It is time to pay and get a good firm that can work on both sides of the aisle. That's Democrats and Republicans. Now, how do you intend to enhance the full functionality of the government as House Speaker if this is taken into consideration? Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, yes, those are my words, and I uh, was trying to let uh, our um, Amazonians know that the TPS says Cameroon, and it is not time for us to be crying who are the beneficiaries. And U.S. Um, laws will be applicable across the board to whoever calls themselves a Cameroonian at this point. But let's not look at that. But what is the real big gain of this? The U.S. government has finally acknowledged that there's a big crisis. And so we need to protect uh, indigenous <coughs> citizens coming from Cameroon, whether it's British Southern Cameroons, the former British, or whether it's the other side. Because believe it or not, you could claim that you were living on the Amazonian side uh, even though you may not be of Amazonian extract and say because of the war, you had to flee. And it's, so yes, they will protect you. The, the Americans are law abiding and they do apply the law and the, with that law, um, it will be said. Remember, it's just a protected status and it's temporary and it's for 18 months. It could, it could be extended. But what we see, it's an opportunity and this opportunity is the U.S. government has acknowledged. We had had resolution 684 that came from the Senate and there was another one prior um, that came from the, um, the House of Representatives. So this is slowly, but gradually, we, they have come to the point where they say it is time. <coughs> yes. It's a problem. So that mean for our people it just means that you have to be warned you will you can advance um it's published go ahead apply and stay but remain engaged because it is not a path to asylum it is not a path to green card or citizenship it's just a protection um and it doesn't stop people who are already uh, applying for refugees to continue with that but to take advantage but what is it in here for us what it is here for us is that we should capitalize on this acknowledgement by the U.S. government and then we use the instruments that help promote and get the U.S. government to help get this crisis under control. And how can they get it? <coughs> we have had the Swiss-led process, which is an international mediated process approved by even the US, the Swiss government, Canadian, and so many other nations that we should sit at a table, negotiate with La Republic of Cameroon. But La Republic of Cameroon has been dragging and having cold feet. <clears throat> it's time to apply. 
um, pressure on La Republic, it is time, both diplomatically and even economically, so that they come to the table, we negotiate our terms of separation, and then we move on so that peace comes to, the, to our territory, and then um, this TPS status will be uplifted. All right, thank, th thank you so much, Madam Speaker. Uh, all right, um, Barrister Timothy, you are a veteran politician and a legal mind. Um, our news director, Tapadi King, believes so much in you, and he also believes that you are a technocrat. Now, in this delight, I'm sure that Ambazonians would like to know the legal basis of the TPS, and um, of course, following from Dr. Winnie Lobati's suggestion. Uh, thank you very much. The, the issue is this, it's a political decision. And the, the take home lesson is this, we have had two successive American governments, the, the, the Republican and now the Democrats. And it is for the two Democrats and Republicans to find a common ground, especially in foreign policy. We have had one now. The issue of negotiating without preconditions came from the, uh, the Trump administration. Some of us have been quoting uh, Tabu Nash or whatever. That was under the Trump administration. Now comes Biden with the TPS, Temporary Protected Status, which is like a continuation of what Trump did. Does it benefit us? Forget about it. You don't just come and say, well, I'm a Cameroonian, and then they just give you protected status. People who are looking for protected status are people who are fleeing. Past four or five years, people in the country from around through Mexico, 99% of them are Zonians. Sometimes we get worried that they didn't call us ambassadors. No, I never call us ambassadors now. We are still recognized. And so, the protected status go to this who apply by day. You know, come and tell the story. Well, I was fighting over a boundary farm in Bafusam or in Bafang or in Betua with my neighbor. That's why I'm running away. That will not end anything. It's not a gift for nothing. Mm -hmm. And so you are protected from what? From deportation. There are lots and lots of our boys and girls, maybe who are under uh, immigration detention centers. Now they benefit from it right now. It's not for you to just wake up now from Bamanda, from Boya, and carry your bags and say, I'm running to America because there's some protected status now. It's not going to happen like that. That's the general statement. There will be guidelines. The protected status will not come from the wind. I remember we've been discussing this thing. People have approached the State Department, they have approached the politicians. That's why it is happening. When they go to work, the fine prints of the guidelines, I'm almost sure that 90 percent of it would favor us as we need to just said it's not about boko haram boko haram has been there america recognized that they even create a military unit somewhere in, in Cameroon there to fight boko haram they have influence in nigeria they have not created that for nigerians fleeing from boko haram if they needed to create one it would have been in nigeria because boko haram is based in nigeria they are terrorizing nigerians they only cross the Cameroon by chance. So that is what it is. It's legally in our favor. The stages are there. Cameroon has almost, uh, no, Washington has almost always told us. They cannot come and say we're giving a protective status for uh, Ambazonia. No, they have not yet recognized us formally. But it's recognition coming, of course. The Swiss led initiative has become the battle cry of the US, of the UN, of all international organizations. There's no way you have no escape from it. It is, at, it is at that negotiation table that we should be able to assert our right internationally to be where we are. Southern Sudan was never called Southern Sudan until they went to the peace talks and then came out with a referendum. East Timor was never an independent country until they went through a referendum through international negotiations. So our time is coming. It's even going faster than most of these countries that we have mentioned. 
So protective status is legally for us, but don't expect the State Department to say, well, it is for Ambazon, and not the only one say that for diplomatic reasons. That's what it is. I may mean, I just correct an error. I'm not doctor, I'm just a barrister. Thank you. <laughs> all, right, all right, thank you so much, Rags. Starting with you for that correction and correction noted. Um, thank you so much, Madam Speaker and Barista and Bishop, for respecting our invitation. I sincerely and we here on Undaunted and Sincerely appreciate. We hope to have you some other time here in the studio. Madam, before you let, you let us go, let me just play. Let me just clarify something about the, the interim government position that you read a few minutes ago. If you look at that document, it is divided into two parts. Okay. First part deals with the international conspiracy against us. Mm. It okay. deals with United Nations resolutions. We were never part of the United Nations, we have never been. But those resolutions were passed. That should have favored us but they conspired with the assistance of britain to mm. deny us what was asked okay. 15 remember that in 1959 they had programmed the plebiscite the to answer these two questions and other nonsense but came 1960 they passed two resolutions 15 14 which challenged the whole idea of a plebiscite it said no country shall be denied independence by virtue of its size, its economy, whatever thing. No matter how small you are, you are entitled to independence. Mm. After that, that was all in December, they passed 1541. We say even if you have to unite, if you have to associate, these are the conditions under which the association must take place. That applied to us. It was never done. Then came forward, they still went ahead and conducted a play visit in February 1961, a year, almost a year after, a long time after 1514 and 1541. And even at the play visit, they came out again with 1608. Five, what did it say? Five simply said that Great Britain, administrative authority, Cameroon, and West Cameroon should sit on the conference table and agree on the principles to unite. Why these three? You remember the word the government in Boya? The government in Boya had cabinet members, called them secretaries of state. But we never had a foreign minister. Neither do we have a defense minister. Those two portfolios were reserved for Great Britain. And so we could not negotiate anything with a Republic who was a real independent country. So why did all this fail? This is international conspiracy. After they did this international conspiracy and left, left us at the mercy of the lions what happened you can now see 1972 mentioned there you see 1984 mentioned there the, 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 the thing continues and so that it was necessary for us to get this down for the international community to read for the Cameroonians in Yaoundé to know that we know what is going on that is the base that is the foundation for which it is Mm. And so for the chiefs and the funds to going to enter into any type of agreement is a farce. That's the basis of which I don't agree with. Then they uh -oh. go back to their palaces. All right. If you All right. yes, yes, I, I remember the, the phone of saw. I, mm. I remember the phone of saw giving this. I wish the father's grave and see how his dead father was in Bingo, treated uh, Ahijo when he came to Basso. His late father was shaking his head in the ground. I don't know why it's called Milo, but the man was there at the time. And so thank you very much. I just thought I should add this small explanation. Oh, thank you so much. We really yeah. appreciate that. And I'm sure that some other time we'll have you on the show to throw more light on these issues. I mean, we need to learn every day about things we're supposed to know. Thank you so much, Barry Sir Timothy, for that. <laughs>
The previous week has been somewhat emotional for Ambazonians. The loss of the gallant FM Isubu has been a bitter pill to swallow. With that, the president declared a national day of mourning for not just FM Isubu, but also for other fallen heroes. And accordingly, the national day of mourning was observed on the 16th of April, 2022. The president of Ambazonia, Dr. Samuel Sacco, also addressed Ambazonians. The address, which started about 7 p.m. Amber time, preceded an interview from Undaunted ABC Amber Newsroom. A moment of silence for Etha Misobu of Bui, General Sam Guru of DMC, and all comrades, others who have succumbed under illegal detention in the notorious Kendoki Central Prison in Yaoundé. The address focused on all aspects of the struggle. Most importantly, the Biden's administration granting a temporary protected status to immigrants from colonial Cameroon. Sir Smart has the president's full speech. As always, it is a delight to be the Aaron of the president in the undaunted newsroom. Whenever we go through the carefully calculated speech, the conclusion that it will just be the best to re-echo the original lines because it is no doubt a package of wisdom, policy, and strategy. Now I read. Fellow Amazonians, today is the day we set aside to remember our brave heroes who were fast to the world beyond since the beginning of this war in 2017, beginning with our national hero, Efemi Sobo, of the Bui warriors who was assassinated by the Unity Palace Militia. I just wanted us never to forget the sacrifices that are being made by our great sons and daughters to ensure a free Amazonia. In this era of anti-revolutionary distractions, what we don't celebrate, we easily forget, and when we forget, we lose focus. I want us to remember what this did to get us to this point and why they were prepared to lay down their lives, and many of us are still prepared to do same if need be, for our independence. This day coincides with the Christian Easter weekend commemorating the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for the salvation of mankind. Fellow countrymen and women, their compatriots, on a brighter note this evening, let me remind you that yesterday, Friday, the 15th of April, the Homeland Security Secretary of the U.S., Mr. Alejandro Mayorkas, on behalf of the Biden administration, granted a temporary protected status to immigrants from colonial Cameroon. This decision has potentially granted all undocumented Amazonian residing Amazonians rather, residing in the U.S. as of April the 14th, the right to stay in the U.S. for 18 months, get a work permit, a social security number, and a driver's license. This measure frees all Amazonians who were awaiting deportation at different ICE centers in Texas, Louisiana, Arizona, or anywhere in the United States. It expires in 18 months. Amazonians in America should rush to apply now for the protected status or better still seek asylum based on this law so that so that when it expires you do not return to your original undocumented status this is a major humanitarian privilege america has granted only to seven african nations since the inception of tps in 1990. they do so in line with their foreign policy position and or u.s national interest They do so in line with their foreign policy position and or U.S. national interests. This is one of the highest gestures any nation can grant the citizens of another nation. On behalf of the Amazonian people, I want to say thank you to the Biden administration and the American people. In so doing, we should understand is not shifting the burden of care to the UNCHR, it is assuming responsibility to help Amazonians in America flee from the war with their tax dollars. For this, I want to thank America for leading in the right direction, not just for endorsing the Swiss-led process, SLP, and imposing a travel embargo on certain war criminals in La Republic de Cameroon, but now for extending their hand of rescue and protection for our fleeing people seeking refuge in the United States. The action of America in the world, as we know, are leading actions. This is therefore a reminder to all African nations and the international community to do more than look away. Wishing the world will go away and pretending this is an internal problem that French Cameroon can address. 
This move by the leader of the free world is an emphatic rejection of the mountain of lies and propaganda told by French Cameroon to the world that the war has ended and that all we need now in Ambazonia is reconstruction. DDR centers and the implementation of their bogus special status. This action by the United States is also an appeal to the conscience of the do not an international stakeholders, especially France, China, and the UK, who continue to ignore or downplay the war, but are trading with the genocidal regime of Yaoundé. Here is the United States correctly defining the ongoing conflict in Ambazonia as a war with consequences beyond the Cameroon borders. It is an attestation that the conflict has attained a significant reality with no winner in view. We have to refuel all our hot centers now with liquid lava. God bless our beautiful country, Amazonia. 16th April 2022, signed Samuel Ikomisako, PhD, President of the Federal Republic of Amazonia. Now we have another powerful young woman in the house who happens to be the press secretary at the office of the president. She is here to give us some more insights as to what the president was communicating and the speech you just listened to. Let's welcome Lady Casey in our interview studio. Lady Casey, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Loud and clear. You're welcome. And thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me today. Yes. So please tell us what's there to carry home with the first dance address. Um, you know, the president is always full of wisdom and really clear. And simply what the president is saying is that as we mourn, he started by, you know, honoring our fallen hero, heroes. You know, he elaborated um, on Sunday, yesterday, that those militias who have, you know, killed um, FM Isubu and, you know, show that they are against us that we should know that these people will not distract us, will not, the killing of our generals, our fighters is not going to stop us. It doesn't matter what La Republic is doing. And this is what the president is trying to tell us that despite the loss of FM Isubu and many others, um, restoration fighters that have died, is not going to distract or stop us from reclaiming and liberating our territory in the margins and everything that is moving forward in the struggle. All right, Lady Casey, I understand you're working very closely with the president and you can, you, of course, of all people can appreciate some of his words and action. We, we should, um, what should we expect in terms of implementation when it comes to some of the policy statements made by the president in his weekend address? When it comes to implementation, the president is very, very meticulous, is very calculated, and is, is driven by results. And when, so when we should look, what we should look forward, sorry, with, in terms of implementing all the policy statements made by the president, is that we need to make Ambazonia, um, we need to make the lava, liquid lava flow across Ambazonia to tell the La Republic militia that just killed uh, our um, fighter, FM Isubu, to let them know that that is not a distraction. So in terms of implementation, and like you can see behind me, there is restoration, lava storm three. Um, that is the part of the implementation, the plan to, to continue 
our liberation struggle to continue to make La Republic know and the international community that we are not relenting, that we are not distracted, and we will continue. Like, I will also want to also add that the president is also of the opinion that the TPS is a temporary uh, protection and we need to make li uh, liquid lava flow across Amazonia, all GAs and counties, so that whatever the international community is doing, there will be, um, they will hasten up, they will also put La Republic under the right pressure so they can come into the negotiation table. So looking forward to, you know, the president implementing and working with the great team that he has at the moment. And that is one of the also the amazing thing that the president has a great team, people who are determined, focused, um, loyal and honest, you know, that are willing to implement and work with the president to achieve the Amazonia dream. Thank you so much, Lady Casey. I hope to have you um, some other time on the show to show more light on the president's um, address because I'm sure that we are going to be getting more addresses from the president. Thank you so much for honoring our invitation this evening. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. <laughs>uh, asking you uh, what is the contribution of political parties, especially the social democratic front um, that you are the national chair chairperson. What is the social democratic? What are political parties doing in uh, general, and what is the social democratic uh, front doing in particular to end the crisis in the northwest and southwest regions? When you ask about the contributions of political parties, when we started off, we were working together. But today, the SDF found, uh, found ourselves alone on the field among the opposition parties. And uh, nonetheless, we still continue with the spirit of 1990 that we came up with a program that we wanted to sell to Cameroonians and we sold this program and they bought it and that's why the SDF candidate was voted in the elections of 1992. Problems we have in the country are problems that we made them ourselves and we have to look for solutions ourselves. A chairman, you were kidnapped, I think, severally by the separatists. Uh, what was your experience in their camp? Well, it's an experience that I pray and hope that so many people don't experience it because it is not very healthy. Though I was not tortured in the camp the way they torture other people or beheaded, otherwise I will not be here talking. But just one night in their camp and the way they dragged me on the floor, I have bruises, I have bruises here, the scars are still there. Uh, and then when I got there, I sat on a bench with all the soil that had fallen on it, and that's where I slept for the night. So I was really shabbishly treated. Whereas I heard other people say that when they adopted them into their camp, they gave them mattresses and clean water. I never had clean water to drink. I came back from the hospital, I had not made two hours in my house. He just came and picked me up. I didn't take my medicines. I didn't take anything. I'd been in, admitted at the Bingo Hospital for one month, for one week. And when I came back, less than an hour, a fraction in my house, they came and picked me up. And that was it. So in that the camp, what happened was that I am not, I'm allergic to smoke. 
and they smoke this, their cigarettes mixed with whatever, I don't know. And this got me very innocent, toxic, and uh, up to today, sometimes when I travel, you see me wobbling. So it was not a nice, uh, uh, it was not, a, not an experience that I want any other person to experience. But suffice it to say that when they interviewed me, the interviews I gave them, proposing what they could do, proposing the way forward, the interview was too hard for them that they never brought it out. So it's unfortunate. And uh, when thereafter they abducted Cardinal Tumi, they found and saw some of the bishops, pastors, etc. I knew that this thing had gotten out of hand and we were, they were going to get nowhere with, the, with what they were doing. Because in every war, there are some people that you can respect them. But in this situation, there's no respect of, there, there are no respect of persons. And as, as long as they had the guns, they can kill their mothers, they can behead the women, they can behead leaders, it is unfortunate. And just the sight of it, that you are in that camp, makes the world a difference. Yeah. Uh, an important personality, a father, a grandfather like him, going through that type of thing. Well, uh, 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 Kilia, for your information, I was cleaned up as well. I, you were? I spent four days at uh, the Amber Camp in the Southwest. You know, so uh, I can understand exactly what the chairman is talking about because I've been a victim as well. It's not an experience that any normal human being would want to go through. First, we are talking about people, some have never even seen the four walls of a primary school. They live permanently on marijuana, whiskey, and tramadol or whatever and drugs. And you know what it means to take a sophisticated weapon and give to a school dropper or mm -hmm. to an illiterate. Mm -hmm. He doesn't, human life is no longer sacrosanct. In fact, these guys have made human life we are worse than animals now. Because the way they kill human beings, you 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 you, you don't you don't you don't even a fowl, even a goat cannot be be, be 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 molested to that extent. So I am still insisting and I'm saying that this issue has sincerely gotten out of hand. Yeah, it has uh, something has to be done. Somebody need to do something somewhere to stop this madness. Exactly. Who is feeling the conflict and who what should be done to stop this senseless war? Are abroad, they are not here in the country, and with the international conventions, I don't know why. Uh, from parliament, from senate, they cannot pass a law to uh, get these people extradited to Cameroon so that they face the arm of the law. Scandalous. You have just seen for yourself how chairman of the failed Social Democratic Front, SDF party, Ni John Frun D, unapologetically and unwaveringly pressing for Amazonians seeking the rights to self-determination to be extradited into French Cameroon and to be prosecuted by the colonial government. With this, we kind of see the fingerprint of John Furundi in the abduction of former President Sisiku Julius Ayuk Tabe and 10 of his cabinet members. Well, the behavior of Nijon Frundi is not surprising anymore. Amazonians see him as a traitor who betrayed a genuine cause to restore the independence of the Southern Cameroons in the late 1980s and early 90s. Today, even he has failed himself and his people, he is without shame, wanting to destroy at all costs. Chairman is not only calling for the extradition of Southern Cameroonians living abroad to be tried in Cameroon for crimes committed, he also says there should be reconciliation as it's Easter and the Bible says we should forgive and forget. Will Ambazonians ever forgive and forget Frundi, who was proven to be adamant to their plight? <laughs> All right, of course, we have Therapati King here in our interview studio. Uh, let's get to hear his thoughts on this particular issue. 
Um, let's go meet him in our um, interview studio. Tapani King, are you there? Yes, I am here. I've been waiting patiently. Can you hear me? All right. Yeah, of course, you know what an um, efficient person can achieve. All right. So you just heard uh, from Star Smart. Do you think that Amazonians will ever forgive and forget John Fundy, who has proven to be adamant to their plight? Yeah, um, actually, the, the, the focal point in that video we watched there is Fundy. I would like to talk about Fundy very briefly because, in my opinion, He's also another demented Confucianist. More so, um, Mr. John Frundi, the word ni John Frundi, ni is respect in Amazonia, and that word ni means a man of honor. But considering the fact that my mom is from Momo, I don't feel comfortable. I know what it means to call somebody a ni. I don't feel comfortable to call him a ni because he, he doesn't deserve honor. He has betrayed his own people a couple of times. First of all, in the 90s, Mr. Frundi became very popular out of betrayal. He betrayed his brothers who thought that we have to reclaim our independence that was stolen by Aegean's government. When Bia categorically in 1984 seceded from a failed union and returned to French Cameroon status as it were, but assimilating and recolonizing Amazonia, leaders at the time, the Anyangwings and many others, thought that we have to return. Nijon Fundi delayed that process until today. He failed. He did not succeed in 1992 elections. And it is so apologetic that even after the people have given Nijon Fundi a lot of respect, um, Amazonian, Saudi Cameroonians believed in him, and even we're hoping that he could become president, protected him, did everything for this man. He looks into the eyes of a people cognizant of their history and tells them without shame that their rights of self-determination should be budged. That's what Fundi is saying there. If Fundi is requesting that those advocating Knowing the Franco Cameroon structure that is in place, that is a criminal structure, that it will kill anybody that is outrightly seeking for total independence of Amazonia, Fundi is wanting that the leaders of the struggle or the liberation movement be deported to Cameroon and be tortured. He went through the narrating a bodge story telling us how he was treated. What Mr. Fundi did not realize is that he just told the world that the Amazonian Restoration Forces are more civilized than Cameroon Army. Now, when, when our president, Sisiko, was picked up in Abuja, the Nera Hotel, I was in a Zoom meeting when President Sisiko was giving a testimony of the treatment he received. It was cruelty. It was cruelty. All of them were placed in very inhumane conditions. And Frundi is very blessed or lucky that the Amazonian Restoration Forces, because they are civilized, do not treat him that way. That's why he's alive today. He says it. Now we want to come who have been taken captive by the Restoration Forces. These are not trained. Like uh, uh, Yimbo Emmanuel will say, I'm going to come, I'm going to handle the issue of Yimbo Emmanuel, and I'm pleading that you give me some time. Because that's a youth that is another stupid fellow. Um, um, Frundi is just telling you that he was arrested by the Restoration Forces and today he's living and enjoying freedom. He was not killed. He was not beaten. He was just placed in the condition the guys, the guys did not have all the logistics that the Yaoundé government will have. And they are living in the forest. So Frundi spending a day with them in the forest considers it inhumane. That's what he's saying. He came out healthy and strong. Nothing happened to him. But we have leaders in Kondengi prison that are almost blind today. Just a few days ago, Amazonians, an Amazonian died because of inhumane situations in the prison. Then you look at Fundi talking that trash. Let me keep Fundi aside. I want to talk on, on the young man with a white shirt um, 
well, he's an elder brother to me, but he's a younger person. That is Yimbu Emmanuel. Yimbu Emmanuel, I know him very well. In 2003, Yimbu Emmanuel and I we were cast in the role of uh, late Dr. Pungong Victor's movie, Trials of Passion. And so there was the lead character of the role. I, the, direct, the artistic director at the time, wanted me to do it because I was interpreting the role so well. But then just a day before they, 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 they had to do the shooting of that movie, Dr. Pungong Victor arrived from the UK and said, I'm too young. And so Yimbu Emmanuel actually acted the role of the lead character. I ended up acting the role of Inspector Mba in that movie. Yeah. That was just the early years when I got into the award today. Now, why did I say so? I said, to have a person like Yibu Emmanuel been into the of, of the youths of Ambassadoria, the youths that he's normally supposed to educate, he's supposed to be a lecturer in the university. He's saying what he has on this. My question a man to do something. He has to do something about it. Because you a man, you should be able to come root government to respect their international boundaries. But unfortunately for you, a man, you're not doing so. You are just a hypocrite. And now you're insulting your brothers that they are not educated enough. And Tramador, whatever nasty word you're using. The Amazonian Restoration Forces, under the leadership of the interim government, are not beheading anyone. Cameroon government, that is trained, that does not take Tramador, beheaded Samsoya in 2017. They have fried babies in the village of Kendem. Yimbo Emmanuel, you go on CRTV every day, and you are just foolish enough not to mention that. And again, the Yimbo Emmanuel is confirming that the Amazonian Restoration Forces were civilized enough to arrest him. Point of correction, he was not an adopt, they were not abducted, they were arrested. They arrested you and you're free today. Thousands of Amazonians are locked up in dungeons in French Cameroon. So it's a, it's a whole messed up. Hmm. It's a whole messed up. All right. Uh, now, do you think, um, what do you think about John Fundy's request to have Southern Cameroonian, that's Ambazonians, deported for persecution in Yaoundé? I just think that Fundy is exposing his, his level of ignorance. You know, a, a couple of times, a um, lot of people have felt that he did that. They caught, uh, French Cameroonians accused him and said he couldn't be, he was not educated. And I'm not trying to insult Mr. Frundi, but I'm saying that his behavior is like one of one of the Ambazonians are asking, maybe he's suffering from dementia. He's really a demented Confucianist. Under what basis is Mr. Frundi requesting? Under what law? Mr. Frundi should be requesting for the international human rights of or, or, or the human rights of Amazonians be respected by Cameroon. Mr. Fulji, in the first place, will be asking the Cameroonian government to release Sisiko and the 10 others and the thousands of Cameroonians that are locked up in the dungeons in, in, in La Republic to Cameroon. Mr. Fulji should be asking Cameroon to respect the international borders or boundaries of the former British South in Cameroon. He should know basic things like that. Mr. Fundi should be reminding the colonial government in Yaoundé that there is no treaty of union between the former British South in Cameroon and French Cameroon. So Mr. Fundi in that statement to me is baseless because he's assuming that um, um, the United States of America where our president is resident and other countries are as corrupt as the Buhari government and the Bia government. So he, as a, as a cruel individual, he wants to employ methods of cruelty, criminality of French Cameroon and have people fighting for a just cause. And criminals like Fundi. Fundi is a criminal. 
Yeah, he's a criminal. He looks into the laws. He looks into the history of the former British Southern Cameroon and despises it. He's doing his own. He used to talk of power to the people. And today, in his power to himself, he's serving his own pollution. He's serving his own will, not the will of the people. I think the person that should face criminal charges is Fundi for betraying the people of the former British Cameroon, Cameroon. For ignoring the fact that there is no treaty of union between Cameroon and Amazonia. There is no other word I can describe him. So there, there, there is going to be no, no extradition treaty. Because in a country where there is law, if that is brought up, then we're going to, first of all, Cameroon will have to produce a document that proves that they have a right to occupy Amazonia. And how did they have claim over Amazonia? Amazonia had their independence on the 1st of October. Cameroon had a year earlier, in, on the 1st of January, 1960. And Cameroon, one year later, in 96, uh, Southern Cameroon's one year later. So whatever Major Fundi is saying there is baseless and should be disregarded. All right, thank you so much, sir, for your time. We'll definitely have you some other time. Yes, tonight, stakeholders of the liberation movement in unity by the president raised over 30,000 US dollars for the National Emergency Fund for Bui County. And it will appear they should be so rushed in this, owing to the fact that the unity warriors continues to kill even more. The unity warriors are it again. They killed General Wolf over the weekend. Some Amazonians believe that General Wolf caused his own death by opting to join the so-called unity warriors even after having been cautioned. Now, you can also see the need for the Award 22 to begin. The nation of Amazonia is faced with both internal and external enemies. On one hand, the nation has the forces of occupation to contend with. On the other hand, enablers like John Frundi, Abu Baler, and terrorists like Atreyabar with the Unity Warriors. We have uh, the Director of Resource Mobilization, Nijo, with us again to take some questions in this regard. But first, um, let's take a look at this particular video. An AGA Mankon Pachonga. I'm not picking in this. 
to the day on target day to day 17 of November four months yeah, on target on target look on target back on my target On target. On target. On target. Manko Bachonga. On target. I'm gonna airport so. Airport base. For airport base so. For airport base. Now for airport so we did. Airport base. Airport base. I'm not saying you're dumb. Nigel, are you there? Director Nigel, are you there? Please confirm you can hear me. Oh, loud. yes, of course, I am. Uh, greetings, happy to so have you here. Greetings, sir. Can you hear me? Please confirm that you, you actually saw that video we played um, it, um, some seconds ago. Of course, yes, I did. I did indeed. Yes, I did. Thank you very much. Um, all right. So, what what are what is your department doing in terms of resource mobilization? Uh, because that video actually looked scary a bit. Yeah. Um, thank you, Onye. Thank you for your invitation again and your wonderful team um, and before I say anything uh, let me um, extend my um, Easter greetings to our wonderful partners in crime on the home and I'm going to a 20 salute you know uh, these are guys and the previous speaker on one of your clips saying that in the first of a classroom and that clip there just showed you boys king an a port field where trained and certified professional army are taking guard over and they're attacking them um yeah what we're doing for resource mobilization um it's no secret it's no secret that we need resources to um combat la republic a country with a well-trained uh, army with a budget for this um, war, which we don't have, and so we have to 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 do what we're doing. Uh, rally, come in and speak to people. Those of us who are what we're doing, those of us who have the ability, and who are also in the diaspora, uh, who are away from the dungeons of these people monitoring you and, and and sending all sorts of things against you We're putting our heads together and as the, the the struggle or the movement has been tamed as is god ordained we have established an unbreakable link between the diaspora and and the, the, the our uh, rf in on the home front and if you follow the our able vice president comrade eric the other day said the relationship it's very similar to that of a mom, a mother, pregnant mother, the umbilical cord, and the baby. That's how closely linked we are. Now, recently, we um, over the weekend, after the evening, the morning, evening of Saturday, Sunday, which was the yesterday, we were on business, and Ambazonians came out to support Bui in the National Emergency Fund Drive, amicably. We, our target was anything around $30,000, as I heard on one of your previous clips. Uh, the cash we left the event was 28000 And so we're still expecting some counties, not everybody had contributed. So hopefully by this time tomorrow, we will have all of this money in. And of that, we're not pledges. The real cash that is in the bank was 60% of that. So out of the $28,000, we have 16,500 in the bank. That's the money that was paid cash between yesterday and today. So our appeal now is for those who are still um, with this 12,000 balance, please, you have between today and Friday to get this money in. We uh, This is for the National Emergency Fund Drive for Bowie. We know Bowie has always been a hot, 
one of the hot zones of this is a uh, struggle the next one is Ngokutunja, which we're doing next Sunday, next weekend. And I hope you'll be there to support us, even if it's morally on you and your team, please do everything you can to let every Amazonian know that if we started this journey and it was 100 miles, we are now on the 60th mile. We have crossed halfway line with the TPS, with everything that is happening. We are moving. We are just 40 miles away from the finish line and we need many more people to join us because this is reality. It's no longer Facebook, it's no longer dreaming, it's reality. We are on our way to Boya, closer to Boya than we started. And uh, of course, the next one will be um, uh, the Lava Storm 3, which my previous uh, speaker, Lady Casey mentioned, uh, that is Operation Liquid Lava Flowing. We need, if you've grown up in a family where or went to school where children are allowed to play and uh, they do play fight and once you see a play fight developing that might get into something serious and one of the children is dominating the other what do you do you come in and separate right because you can see that uh, what we expect la republic to do now is to step back because all along we've been defending ourselves we are getting to a phase where we would convert that defense to attacking them. We've not started attacking them. You know, those who are the strategists can tell you this, but we're getting very close to when we'll start attacking them. All along, we've been defending ourselves. So with 40 miles to go, I think we're going to go for it. We're going to start attacking them. And the numbers are increasing. More Ambazonians are believing in this movement. They're joining the ranks. So La Republic, please, I think Switzerland is going to be an easier option for you. Thank you, Onye. Thank you very much. And I hope I answered your question. Oh, yeah. but, but before you go, uh, I just want to find no, out, were you yeah, expecting no, more than uh, <laughs> what you actually got from the fundraising on Sunday? Were you expecting more than what you actually got? No, absolutely not. We, we as I said earlier, we set ourselves a target of $30,000 for, for, for this is this is an emergency fund drive. OK, it's a national appeal for Amazonians to come and support uh, we, we we have three three counties that we're going to support during this fund drive this emergency fund drives that was one that was buoy the next one is gokotundia next weekend and then we'll take a break and then we we'll come back and finish up with indian there is already a school of thought that following the announcement of the tps our foreign department Department of Foreign Affairs might need another quick draft before we go into normal draft again. So you might be hearing us, you know, we are in a situation where it's a war, everything changes and we can change strategies as long as there's a winning strategy, we're happy to change that. So one of the things I'm for thinking already while here talking to you is that after Ngokotunja next weekend, uh, Dian, after a week after that, we might have to do something for the Department of Foreign Affairs to push them to make sure if you heard Lady Lobati and Barrister Timothy, they were suggesting that we needed to use this TPS as a leverage, as, 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 as a, some help, some force that we can then get into lobbying. You know, we haven't attempted lobbying before. If we did, it was a very low scale. TPS has now come in. As I'm saying, we're getting closer and closer to Boya. We need to now up the game and we might need to be you know, paying some lobbying companies, uh, organizations to say, look, we are just 30 miles away, get us to Boya. This is what we're doing. So we we, we met our target um, for, for Bui. We set $30,000 and we came out with 28 yesterday. I think we're looking at a few people have come in, a few counties that didn't turn up yesterday have turned up. So that figure, my next coming, I'll tell you exactly how much we're going for Bui. But the next one is Nango Kutundia. And the appeal is, Ambazonians, please, Gokutundia has stood the test of time. They need us to come and support them. And we're calling on every Amazonians to join us next weekend to support Gokutundia. All right, before, before you go, Director, before you go, um, the incoming draft, you mentioned it briefly, and that's Award 22. Please um, what, give us reasons why you should start now. Oh, um, you know, to, to, to be four armed is always, you know, a, a, a good thing to do rather than uh, starting things late. One of the, the, the new things we're bringing into this year's award, as I, I mentioned in my previous talk with you, is that 
we have given liberty to the counties to pick their dates that they would want to be drafted, they would like to be drafted. Unlike in the past, we used to come and say, hey, okay, we'll draft Mezam on day. No, we've allowed that the people of Mezam will choose a date and we, we, we draft them. So we are offering all this flexibility, all these new ways of doing things so that people can get involved, people can raise a lot of awareness, give them enough time, and, and then we can maximize the opportunities that we have to raise funds to, to, you know, to get the resources that we need to get over this, um, get to this winning line, this journal in front of us. All right. Thank you so much, Director Nijo. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm sure that we will have you um, again very soon. Please do. It's we'll always a privilege. Again. And this is a breaking news. La Republic the Cameroon military stormed a hotspot in Mer locality, a village after Njodam in Mita after 1 a.m. Had all who were at their apex of their Easter Sunday enjoyment seriously beaten, some almost to death. Then they gathered all the bikes that were around and set them all on fire. We're going to show you a video where you're going to see this. Now, this morning, those who visited the scene counted in all nine bikes burnt down only those who did not see them and can't even explain why now the question i'm asking is when will our young people know that cameroon is out to depopulate them is there really enjoyment during war i ask that i may know In our editorial of today, we continue with some historical facts of today's Ambazonia. Now, stay smart. We can't wait to hear um, your editorial for today. Today, we get into part three of the historical facts of what makes today's Ambazonia. On Friday with part two, we began with the historical timeline from 1858, the city of Victoria established by Alfred Saker. We went right into 1884, establishment of the Ambas Bay Protectorate, and concluded in 1887, the Ambas Bay Protectorate ceded to Germany. Now, before we get into part three, I would like to highlight the importance of this history to this generation, the never again generation of Ambazonia. La Republic de Cameroon has concealed the history facts of Amazonia for too long for reasons we all know, enslave, assimilate, and or annihilate the race. Now, let's make progress. In today's part three, we begin with 1916, Britain and France occupied German Cameroon. Even before the Germans were able to pacify the peoples and interior of the Ambas Bay, the First World War broke out in Europe. And in the intervening period, the British and the French were able to penetrate the Cameroons, defeating the Germans by 1960, and temporarily dividing the territory between both powers along the Simon Milne line. The political status of the Ambas Bay territory, as well as of French Cameroon, was to be altered in ways that will have grave consequences for the future of both people. With implications for the ongoing war of national liberation and self-determination for the people of the Southern Cameroons, Ambazonia. We move even further now into 1919, German Cameroon divided at the Versailles Treaty. The former Ambers Bay Protectorate is carved out of German Cameroon and becomes part of British Cameroons after the division of the state territory is recognized at the Versailles Treaty ending World War I. 
This Basel Treaty establishes the British Cameroons as an internationally recognized territory with clearly defined boundaries. Its western frontiers with Nigeria demarcated by the Anglo-German Treaty of 1913 from Lyola in Lake Chad to Bakassi and its eastern boundaries with French Cameroon defined by the seaman milner Line of 1916 and the Versailles Treaty of 1990. And finally today, we move into 1922. The Cameroons becomes a League of Nations mandate. In 1922, the Cameroons was made a League of Nations mandated territory under United Kingdom administration, while French Cameroon was also made a League of Nations mandated territory under French administration. This further established the international character of these territories and helped develop a national identity for the people of the Southern Cameroons. It was also during the same period that the erstwhile German plantations were consolidated into a national corporation called the Cameroon Development Corporation, CDC, which was to act as the economic engine of development for the territory. In part four of tomorrow, we will get in closer into some deep truths of Amazonia's history, but I won't conclude without appreciating our editor-in-chief and news director, Tar Party King, for putting these historical facts together. Now, if you want to get more of such interesting historical facts, visit our website at www.abcambertv.com for more. I am Star Smart, and I am reporting for Undaunted ABC Amber News. And now to sports. Manchester United forward Cristiano Ronaldo scored his second hard trick in three Premier League games to boost his club's hope of qualifying for next season's UEFA Champions League. Arsenal's manager Mikel Arteta admitted his side's form was a real worry after Sam Tom won at St. Mary's to inflict a third successful defeat on the top four chasing Garnet. Great Britain were unable to secure their place in the Billie Jean King Cup finals at Harriet Dart and Cathy Swan lost the decisive doubles match against the Czech Republic. Gab Ellison has more. World Sports. Cristiano Ronaldo scores his 60th career hat-trick to help Manchester United get all three points against Norwich City. Manchester United forward Cristiano Ronaldo scores his second hat-trick in three Premier League games to boost his club's hopes of qualifying for next season's UEFA Champions League. Manchester United beat relegation threat in Norwich City at Old Trafford in an entertaining 3-2 affair. See Ronaldo went on to net his 60th career hat-trick, including 50 at club level. The Portuguese said scoring his 60th hat-trick was important for him. See Ronaldo also urged his Manchester United teammates not to give up but fight until the end of the season. The win over Norwich means Man United are now in the fifth position on the Premier League table with three points behind fourth position Tottenham after 32 games. Arsenal lose three successive games. Arsenal manager Mikel Arteta admitted his side's form was a real worry after Southampton won at St. Mary to inflict a third successive defeat on the top four chasing gunners. Jen Bednarak scored the game's only goal late in the first half after the visitors had failed to adequately deal with Saints' corner. Bukai Osaka was denied from point-blank range by Southampton goalkeeper Fraser Foster with the score still goalless, but further clear-out openings proved hard to come by for Arsenal until the closing stages of the second half. The Gunners remained three points behind fourth place Tottenham, who were beaten at home by Brighton early on Saturday, although they do still have a game in hand on their North London rivals. Southampton, meanwhile, climbed to 12th after claiming their first league win since February. FA Cup semi-finals. Manchester City 2, Liverpool 3. Jurgen Klopp praised one of Liverpool's best ever performance under the German as the Reds split Manchester City to reach the FA Cup final, but he insisted it was not a statement win. Club side swept away City in an exhilarating first-half display at Wembley to lead 3-0 at the break. 
Pep Guardiola's team came back in the second half to make it 3-2, but it was not enough to deny Liverpool the win. Absolutely proud, incredible, said Klopp. The first half was one of the best we ever played. We did all the right stuff. We scored in the right moments. We were outstanding. I loved each second of it. The win followed the thrilling 2-2 draw between the two sides at Etihad Stadium last Sunday in the Premier League. Man City and Liverpool are battling for the league title with leaders Man City one point ahead of their rivals with seven games remaining. Tennis, Billie Jean King Cup, Great Britain lose to Czech Republic in Prague. Great Britain were unable to secure their place in the Billie Jean King Club finals as Harriet Dart and Katie Swan lost the decisive doubles match against the Czech Republic. With the best of five tie locked at 2-2, Czech pair Marketa Vondrasova and Karolina Mochova sealed victory with a 6-1, 7-5 win on the Prague clay. Earlier, Dart beat Linda Frovatova 6-0, 5-7, 6-2. That came after British number one, Emma Raducano, lost 6-1, 6-1 to Von Drosova. Ellison reporting for Undaunted, ABC Amber News. Sports report we've got to the end of Undaunted tonight, but before we go, here is a recap of our major stories. The Paramount Fund of Unso of the Bui County has shockingly decorated a member of parliament from the Litoria region with a traditional title of Ufomi. The position statement for the interim government of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia released last Sunday evening and supported by every arm of government sent a strong message to La Republic the Cameroon and the international community. The temporary protected status TPS, which typically benefits undocumented immigrants and those in visas that are set to expire, also favors more to those who have been living in the United States before April 14th this year. We also told you that the President tackled the rights of the nation of Ambazonia on the National Day of Mourning last Saturday, April 16th, was touching and electrifying. Chairman of the Social Democratic Front, Nijon, John through 1,000 Cameroonians to be extradited into French Cameroon and to be prosecuted by the colonial government. The Unity Warriors of Colonel Bankri, Joe Ayaba, and the Coopers kill another general, General Wolf. In our editorial of today, we continued with some historical facts of today's Ambazonia. And in sports, Cristiano Ronaldo scores his 60th career hat trick to help Manchester United get all three points against Norwich City. And that was it for tonight on Daunted, bringing it to the news on Talk Stories. I am Oni Opala. We'll leave you with ABC Amber TV images. Thanks for watching.